Ways to sell your house without reducing the price. Well, the bottom line for this is you need to get greater visibility of your property. How do you get greater visibility of your property? Well, you got to market it properly. That's one of the biggest issues right there is marketing your pop property properly. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you make sure? Well, you got to have professional pictures. You got to start off with somebody that knows what they're doing in the marketing world. Just did this yesterday with an agent to help try and drive some traffic to the property. But I'm going to give you something that we've been talking about since, well, it's for a long time. I don't remember when we started talking about it, but I'm sure it goes back to at least 2017, how to get the most money from the sale of your home. And obviously, every homeowner wants to make sure they maximize their financial reward in selling their home. But how do you guarantee that you receive the value for your house? Here are some ways of doing that. And yeah, we're going to give you three different ways of maximizing the value. So the first one is going to be, well, it's quasi in there, is we're looking at the price. We want to make sure the price is properly done. And one of the things that we know, and we've got a graphic for this one, is we want to make sure that you price the property properly and maybe even price it aggressively. So if you're watching us on ronsegalradio.tv, any of the socials or the ABC News and Talk AM 1490 video feed, you're going to see a graph right here. And I'm going to talk you through it for those of you that are listening to us on radio. But the impact of price on visibility. And this was something that was commissioned. I think it was commissioned by, by the National Association of Realtors. And I think it was one of their subsidiaries. I think it's a, um, I think it was a company called Sales or Score. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find the um, Move Sales Inc. was the source of the graph that we're showing. So here's the issue. You want to get as many people into the property as you can. How do you do that? First off, price it properly, maybe even aggressively. The impact of the price on visibility, if you price your property 15% above the market price, well, about 10% of the marketplace will see your property. If you price your property 10% above market value, eh, you may get to 30% of the market will see the property. If you price your property at market value, you're going to get about 60%. Price it 10% below, 75% of the market will see it. And if you price it 15% below, 90% of the market will see it. Price your property properly. Think about that. If you've got a $500,000 house and you price that house at $575,000, people are going to know it. If you price it at 425, people are going to say, I got to go see this. Is there something wrong? What is the value? Why, why am I, what am I missing? I need to go see this property. Welcome, Alex. Glad to see you with us. So pricing it properly is the start. The next step, how do you make sure that you get people to see the property? Well, I shared this a little bit yesterday. If you weren't listening, shame on you. But here's the issue. Realtors work for money. They work for commission. There are cut rate realtors out there who say, you know something? There's, you don't need to pay the realtor anything. People are going to see the property anyway. Hogwash. Because most properties are sold by realtors. And realtors, I, get, I talk to a lot of them. And they say, well, we, Ron, we don't look at the commission on the buyer's agents is going to get made, are going to, is going to get paid. Really? So the realtor is the only one in the world that doesn't care how much they make for going out to work every day. I care about how much I make going out to work. You probably care about how much you make going out to work. But the realtor says, I don't know. I don't look at that. Really? Who are you trying to convince? If we put in there that you sell this $500,000 house or million dollar house and you're going to make $1, are you going to work real hard to sell that? If you're having an entry-level job at, I don't know, McDonald's, 
and they're paying, I don't know, $15 an hour. I don't know what the number is. I'm just throwing a number out there. I have no clue what it is. But say you get $15 an hour at McDonald's. And somebody comes across the street from McDonald's. They work at In-N-Out. And they say, you know something? We got to work a little harder in In-N-Out, but they pay us $22 an hour. Are you willing to work a little harder? I bet you are. And I bet a realtor will too. So what happens if we tell the realtors, we're going to increase your commission, the buyer's agents, to say 4% or 5%. Now, normal in the market right now is about 2.5%. We're saying, what if we go to 4 or 5? Do you think the realtor is going to work harder? Of course they are. Now, they're not buying the house, but they're going to call everybody that they know that's shopping the market for that particular property type if it's suitable for them and make sure that they get them over there to see the property. Everyone's going to go see it. Okay, so that's the second way that we're going to try and drive traffic. We're going to get the price is going to help us open people's eyes, the commission to the buyer's agent, and we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the next way. And then we're going to talk about what's most important to the seller. Let's chat about that a little bit on, on ways to sell your property for the most money possible. That's kind of what we wanted that we've been, uh, we've been chatting about here. How do you get that high amount of money? How do you, and I gave you some ways here to do that on, on, on accomplishing these goals. So. Let's think about this. I told you already that we can price isn't a, a serious issue. Okay, that, that makes sense. I think it makes sense for you. I've already talked to you a little bit about the concept of increasing the commission and that the realtors do work for money. They want to get paid. Not a real tough is not a real not a real stretch to understand next item payment we've been talking about for a long time on ron single radio since before the interest rates started spiking we've been talking about this because i've been doing this a long time i tell you before i helped the first family that i helped the first family that i helped get a home loan was back in 1983 i know don't say it many of you were not even born then but I did help a family get a loan back then. I've looked at hundreds of credit reports. I've looked at lots and lots of files. Here's the issue. Here's the issue that I want you to, to understand very, very clearly. The payment can be manipulated by the interest rate. There is a much more significant adjustment to payment when you work on the interest rate and not the price of the property. So as a seller, if you're trying to maximize the amount of money that you get for a property, look at the interest rate. Roughly one third. So if you're thinking about on a $500 or $600,000 house, if you're thinking about a 5% price reduction on a $600,000 house, 5%, that's $30,000. For about $15,000, you can have a significant effect on the interest rate. So where the rates today, and I don't know what they are, I'm not offering you and giving you any kind of an offer right here. But let's just say, well, let's just go back and say that OBMMI tells us that we're at 7%. Let's use that number. Well, by manipulating the interest rate, by instead of doing the, the price reduction, use the same money to do a payment reduction, you could probably get that payment down to around five and a half or five and three quarters percent permanent. Now, I know there's people out there talking about it, the, the temporary buy downs, two, two, one buy down, which means you get 2% the first year and 1% the second year, or the three, two, one, three percent off on the interest rate, then the two percent, then one percent. That does not help you buy a piece of property. Yes, your payment is lower, but it doesn't help with the qualification. It doesn't help with affordability. The permanent buy-down does. So we use that instead. It must be done properly. If it's not done properly and our team understands how to do that properly, then what can end up happening is you get involved in 
predatory lending and high cost lending violations. Don't want that. Need to bring our team in early to the process so that we can get on board and get these things done for you the right way and not have compliance violations which don't appear until the very end. So there's three ways, price properly or maybe even aggressively, deal with the commission and deal with the payment. Now, the biggest issue that I have is, or I hear of, first off, we've already dealt with the uh, uh, appraisal problems. If there is an appraisal problem, we've got solutions for that. Now, there's a couple other issues you need to understand. Buyers have the opportunity of going to those iBuyer programs, dumb, but they can go there. Why do I say they are dumb? It's because people don't understand what they're doing. When you go to the iBuyer programs, the open, pa open door or offer pad or any of those things that you're seeing advertised, what are they saying? Well, this is fast and it's quick and you don't pay commissions and they don't tell you that you're going to get a lower offer. They don't tell you there's a lot of hidden and non-disclosed fees and they don't tell you about all the other risks. So let's just use this number and let's say that you've got a $600,000 house and you've got $200,000 in equity. How do we get the equity numbers? Well, equity is very simply the, whoops, I did that wrong. So I'm, I'm sorry, let's do a million dollar house. That's why I've got the numbers on my screen. Do a million dollar property. It's about a median price for Orange County. You owe on that property $600,000. You have $400,000 in equity. Simple math. You take the amount of the property value. That's the comps. You take the amount owed, subtract that from the property value, and that tells you your equity. Now, what is the seller most concerned with? How much money am I going to get after expenses? Now, I can't give you all the expenses because some of them are just going to be equal all the way across. But I'm going to say three different areas here when we talk about what is the net effect to the seller. What is the net effect going to be to the seller? That's the important thing right here. We're talking about ways to get your property sold for the highest possible price and avoid that price reduction. So I've given you the three ways of doing it. Number one, we can talk about the listing price. So we can get an aggressive price when we put it on the multiple listing service. We talked about an above market buyer's commission to make sure we get as many agents as possible pushing the property. And I'm saying go to a 4 or 5% buyer's agent commission. You're still going to have to pay your listing agent his or her 3%, but 4 or 5% on the buy side. Might even look at helping with the payment. Now, you might even go above asking price to get the payment down so all this isn't coming out of the seller's money. Yes, you are allowed to go above asking price, and we do have the right ways of doing that with the appraisal gap program that we have through the team at Geneva Financial. And again, the team understands how to do the commission numbers and how to do the, the assistance with payments. But let's take this even further, because what does the seller care about? How much money do they net, net, net at the end of the day? Now, I'm going to give you three different options here. And I'm going to tell you that some of the things, I'm not going to give you all of the costs because some of them are going to be the same for you know, regardless of the option. So I don't know what they are, but they're really not material because if I have to take it off one, I have to take it off all three. So here's the idea. We started off with a million-dollar property. We owed 600000 on it. We've got $400,000 in equity before all the costs. You can go to the open door offer pad. That's an option. And yes, they are fast. Yes, they are quick. Um, no, they say that you're not going to pay commission, but they charge a fee. Huh. Some Usually about 7.5% is the normal fee they charge. Sometimes they'll go to 5%, but generally that's, they call it a fee of 7.5%. They don't tell you that it's the same as a commission, but it's the same as commission. So they charge that fee. What are you going to net out? Depending upon where they come in with all of their numbers, you're going to net out as a seller somewhere between, oh, losing money 
and three hundred thirty thousand dollars net. Ew, I don't want to give up all my equity, right? I, that doesn't that doesn't sound too good to me. So where are we coming? In? Because they're not going to offer you market value, no matter what they say. We've already seen it. We've I've got case studies of tests where they don't offer market value. Now, what if you go to a traditional realtor and they're going to list it at five to six percent? It's going to probably stay on the market a little bit longer. It's negotiated based, right? They're going to negotiate on that price, whatever you listed at. So if you listed at a million, uh, on norm, you're going to get a five to six percent haircut off of that. Okay, now you're going to be uh, on the market a little longer. It might be a, take a little bit a little while. Yes, you are going to get a personalized trained realtor because you're choosing them, and you're going to get somewhere between five percent below list price and five percent above the list price, and you're going to pay five to six percent commission. So at ninety five percent of list price, you're going to net out at three hundred two thousand five hundred dollars. If you get 5% over list price, you're going to net out at $397,500. Uh, okay. It's okay. Not best idea. Now, what if you go with this 4 or 5% buyer's side commission plus the 3% listing agent commission? So, yes, you're paying 7 or 8%. I'm going to use the lower number, 7%. Okay. So... What happens here? We're also going to say that we're going to list it for 1% more than what a traditional broker lists at. By doing all these things we've talked about, we're going to create real demand on this property, a, free, a feeding frenzy. It's going to push the price up, which means you get more money. You get more of your equity. You list it uh, 1% for 1% above the comp value. And Here's where here, let's let's take a look at this one. So, what if we go on a if they just get the full price offer and we did it 10% above? That's a million ten thousand. The seller's gonna net out at three hundred thirty-nine thousand three hundred dollars. Remember the low end on the traditional agent, the seller is gonna net out at three oh two five hundred on the low end, and on the online, yeah, if they give you a 30% haircut, which is not unusual, you lose. $400,000, you have to come in with money. But here, you're coming out with $339,300 on the high end. Okay, so what if we get more money? You get offers up to 10% above. So you get $1,111,000. That means you're going to get $433,230 is the net that you're going to get as the seller. The net you're getting as the seller. You tell me, what do you like? Now, remember, I didn't put in their commissions, or our title and escrow. None of them are going to tell you what the uh, uh, repairs orders might be, but they'll probably be about the same for all of those. So I didn't put those in there. All I did was take the the pricing less commissions on each one of those and give you the net numbers. So the online broker, yeah, they're quick, but at what cost? Are you willing to give up maybe as much as $103,000 of your equity for their convenience, costing you $103,000 of your equity? Uh, that's the best scenario. I don't think you're going to be too excited about that. So now we've given you three ways to, to sell your property for more money without reducing the price, and you get to net out more money at the end of the day. What do you think about that concept? I think a lot of people are going to like the idea of selling their property, getting more money, and netting more money by using some of these, these strategies. Not everybody understands them. Not every realtor understands how to do it the right way. Give us a call at 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. We will tell you how to do this the right way.